Hi and welcome back to Evita at the Rhythm of My Heart. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, like and share my videos so that I can continue making these videos for you. It's a lot of fun. In today's video, I'm going to take you through the step-by-step -step of how to make pernil asado or Puerto Rican pork roast. This came as a request from Carlos who wants to prepare a special dinner for his wife on their anniversary. So Carlos, this is for you. Stay tuned and when I come back, I'll take you through the step-by-step -step of how to make this great, delicious, simple, worth the wait, pernil asado or pork roast. prepare my vanilla asado. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare the uh, mojo or marinade that we're going to be using for it. And for that I'm going to need some fresh garlic cloves, sour orange, I have a nut of seed oil or a chote, extra virgin olive oil, dried oregano, I'm going to have some adobo without pepper, sazonador total, freshly ground black pepper, salt and I'm going to be using some gray salt but any kind of salt will do and then I'm also going to have some extra garlic cloves that we're going to use to stuff uh, the cavities that I'm going to create on the pork roast of course we're going to need um, a pork roast and I have a 10 pound roast uh, this marinade is enough to uh, season or marinate a pork roast anywhere between 10 to 15 pounds and you're going to have some leftover and I'm going to show you also what to do with the leftover mojito or marinade. The first thing I'm going to do is I like to break down the garlic. So I'm going to take my three quarters of a cup of garlic and mix it with the uh, salt. And like I said, I'm using gray salt, but any kind of salt would do. And I'm going to add the salt. And also the black pepper to uh, break down the garlic along with the extra virgin olive oil and I'm going to be using an immersion blender or a handheld blender but you can do this in a food processor or just a regular blender so I'm going to start slowly and <laughs> on the beginning. What we want to do is just crush the garlic. And now, okay. Now I want to add the annatto seed oil. Okay. And very carefully, so it doesn't splash, we want to blend and continue breaking down the garlic. It's only a few minutes. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and add the adobo and blend. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and add the oregano and the sazonador total. The reason why I don't add everything at once is because I don't want it to uh, fly all over the place, but I guess you can put everything in at once and it works just as well. And the last thing I'm going to add is the sour orange. Now, sour orange is something that it, it used to be in the old days, um, be used all the time um, in our cooking. Um, over the times, I think people stopped using them, but I'd rather use sour oranges as opposed to uh, vinegars. I mean, I do like cooking with vinegars in certain dishes, but for this particular marinade, I find that the uh, sour orange is perfect. So, there we go. And a 
my marinade is almost done and I did this real time. As you can see, it doesn't take that long to prepare. And within minutes you have your marinade for your pork shoulder or your penin ready. And of course, you know, it, you can blend it until all the garlic has broken now. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be uh, washing and drying our pork roast so we can go ahead and marinate. I've already pre-washed my pork roast and towel dried it. And I'm going to put it on its back. And now what I want to do is I want to peel back the skin. I already began doing that, but let me show you. Um, I'm using a boning knife. And what you do is you go along like that. Hope you can see that. Let's see. Like this. And you go around the whole roast. And of course, a bony knife is very sharp. So this is the perfect knife to do that. And I continue going around the roast, peeling back all the skin. Now, this skin is what every good Puerto Rican knows as uh, chicharrón. And I'm pretty sure that if we survey a uh, hundred Puerto Ricans, they will tell you that they look forward to eating the chicharrón of their pernil. Um, kind of becomes a bit of a battle fighting over the chicharrón of the pernil. So I'm going to continue going around the roast until I remove or peel back um, the skin. I don't want to remove it. I want to just peel it back just enough so that we can make room um, for the marinade or the mojo that I'm using for this pernil. Once you are done peeling back the uh, chicharron or the pork skin, like this, um, what you want to do is turn your pork roast to its other side, like this. And the next step for prepping our roast is to pierce pockets or holes into the pork about an inch or two apart, being careful not to hit a bone. And what we're doing is we're cre creating pockets that we're going to stuff with the uh, remaining garlic cloves. And you want to go around the entire rose. There's a bone. And you continue piercing pockets into it until you do the whole rose. So you want to be careful not to break your knife. Okay. Just like that. Now I like to turn it to the other side also and peel back the skin and do the same thing. Go ahead and pierce holes into it or pockets. Okay. And there we go. All right. You can do as many or as little as you like. Now, the more holes you pierce, the more garlic you're gonna stuff into it. And I gotta tell you, one of the uh, secrets to a really good pernil is stuffing the pernil with uh, raw garlic cloves. Okay, so our roast is ready. And I'm gonna get a pan so we can begin marinating our roast. Next, we take the uh, remaining garlic cloves and we quarter them. And these are gonna be used to stuff the cavities that we poked into our pork. And depending on how big the garlic cloves are, you can quarter them or half them. I'm gonna quarter these. Okay. The bigger they are, the harder they are to um, stuff into the uh, cavity. So you want to make sure you don't cut them too big so you can just go ahead and insert them into the holes or the cavities. Okay, there we go. And the last one. Now what this is going to do is going to infuse the pork roast from the inside out. And once the garlic is sliced, we take the slices and we just stuff the cavities like so. And we go all the way around the pork and we find all those nice little holes we poked. 
including the ones on the side, and we just stick a piece of garlic into them until it is all done. I'm gonna continue doing that, and I'll be right back to show you the rest of the marinating process. And now, I'm gonna peel back the skin and pour some of the uh, mojo or marinade over the pork. Okay, look at that beautiful color. And we're gonna begin rubbing the roast all over like this. Smells so, so nice here right now. Wow. If you can get some of the marinade into the holes, that'd be great also without taking out the garlic, you know? And you just want to give it a nice rub down. Okay. Pour some on the skin also. Like this. Okay. And we want to peel back the skin. Rub the back also. And we keep rubbing. Now we want to turn the roast on the other side and repeat the same step. We're going to go ahead and pour some of the marinade. Uh, remember I told you this uh, pork roast marinates uh, a roast from 10 to 15 pounds. And you're going to have some left over that you can use for our sauce or as a basting liquid for your roast. And here we go. Our roast is nicely marinated. And we want to make sure we get every little bit of it. And in here, I like to put some also. There we go. Nice. Okay. We're giving the roast a nice little massage just to make sure we coat it well. And now I'm going to put it on its back again or on its uh, well, skin side up because this is how I'm going to marinate uh, my pork in the refrigerator and it's also how I'm going to bake it and the reason why we roast it skin side up is because this lovely skin that we pulled back it's what we refer to as a chicharron which is one of the best parts of a pernil so I'm going to pour a little bit more of the marinade and that's it all done. Now if you don't have a pan like this one that has a cover, what you want to do is cover this with plastic and then, you know, nice and tightly. And you want to keep it in the refrigerator. Um, I like to marinate my Berlin for up to 48 hours, but you can marinate it anywhere between 6 to 8, hour, six to eight hours or overnight. Um, I'm going to leave mine for two days. The roast has been marinating in the refrigerator for two days, uh, covered, and uh, as you can see, all the marinade is nice and shiny and glossy. It smells absolutely amazing. Uh, I'm gonna be roasting my pork at uh, 325 degrees, and I'm gonna roast it 15 minutes for every pound of roast. And since this is a 10 pound roast, we're gonna have it in the oven for anywhere between two and a half hours to three hours. Uh, depending on your oven. The pernil was cooking for an hour and I took a uh, half a cup of the uh, remaining uh, mojo marinade and I mixed two tablespoons of additional anato seed oil and a quarter of a cup of the sour orange and mix it together and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this as the basting, uh, as the basting liquid for the uh, pernil. So we're going to brush it again all over the pernil and what we're doing is, is just infusing more flavor to our pernil and then we're going to put it back in the oven and continue roasting it and every half an hour we're going to come back with our basting liquid and we're going to brush it onto the pernil. Now I know it's not looking like your typical pernil just yet because it's not cooked all the way yet but trust me when I tell you the smells alone in my kitchen right now tell a different story. Um, so Carlos, 
I hope um, your wife is impressed um, because I promise you that this bernie is gonna make her fall in love with you all over again. So here we go. Any man that takes the time to want to make a nice and special dinner for their wives on their anniversary um, is a good man in my book. So I'm gonna pop this back in the oven and set the timer to half an hour and we're gonna come back and continue basting it every half an hour for the next hour and a half or so until our panel is done. Okay, so what I like to do to get this um, skin nice and crispy, um, I have a baking sheet that I lined up with aluminum foil and I'm going to remove my skin. Remember we had uh, removed most of it. So what I did is I cut on the back and I removed it entirely. And I like to line it up on a baking sheet like this. And I'm gonna pop it in the, in the oven for 10 to 15 minutes on broil. Um, you do wanna keep an eye on it because this burns very quickly and you wanna make sure that you don't burn your chicharron. You want it to be crispy, but you don't want it to be burned. The trick to getting the perfect chicharron is to put it under the broiler for about 10 to 12 minutes. Uh, but you want to keep an eye on it and also you also want to put it on the top rack of the oven um, if you look closely you can see that that chicharron is almost done it's been uh, cracking and crackling for about two minutes now so i'm going to keep a very close eye on it just to uh, prevent it from burning and one thing i forgot to mention is halfway through the cooking process you want to turn the uh, pork skin uh, to the other side, place it back on the broiler, and leave it another two, maybe three minutes, and uh, your chicharron is done. And this is our pork chicharron or rind. Hear that sound? It's nice and crispy, and that's what you're looking for. And there is your pernil asado, or pork roast. Evita style. And I just want to show you and point out to you very quickly, I sliced a piece of the uh, pork just so that you can see the pieces of garlic that we uh, stuffed into the pork. And that's what it looks like and that's what it starts to flavor the pork from the inside out. Just like that. Check it out. Well Carlos, I hope you try this. I hope this video helps. And most importantly, uh, I wish you a very happy anniversary. Finally, for my favorite part, I get to try it. I'm gonna be serving mine with some arroz con gandules. Um, be sure to look for my recipe, my step-by-step -step video on how to make arroz con gandules. And look at that, all that garlic. Mm -mm -mm. Mm, it smells delicious. Let's go ahead and try it. It's tender, juicy, very flavorful. You could taste the garlic, not too overpowering, perfect, perfect balance of seasonings and flavor. It's just absolutely delicious. Mm. Well, friends, I hope you try this recipe. If you like my video, please remember to subscribe, like and share my videos, leave your comments down below. Activate the little bell on the bottom so that you can be notified when I upload new videos. And as always, until next time, this is Evita at the Rhythm of My Heart. Buen provecho y hasta la próxima.